Today we're going to move forward a bit to um, statistical modelling. So far we've um, sort of just looked at a load of statistical tests last time, but this is going to be a session where I'm going to attempt to cover a lot, but it's more to just give you a feel for all the types of statistical model that are out there, although you might not come away with a sort of detailed understanding of how they all work. I thought, given this short session, would just give you an awareness of what models are available. I put this slide up last time, so this is really just to emphasise that there are stati different statistical objectives that you might have. And last time we were concentrating on proving a result, so we were doing hypothesis tests. We'd have a, a simple hypothesis and we'd try and prove it by disproving a null hypothesis. But there are other objectives such as exploring the data for interesting information or building a predictive model. These things are sort of more what come into statistical modelling. Statistical models do more than just uh, prove results. So why do we need um, statistical modelling? The comparisons we did last time were simple group comparisons and they assumed that your groups of data were independent of each other but quite often you might be in a situation where you've got more structure in the data. For example the data might be paired in some way and we did look briefly at that with a paired t-test animals might be grouped in cages or by farms in different areas. Your experiments might be repeated. You might have data that's grouped on plates. You might have measurements taken over several time points. So in all these cases, there's some structure in the data, which ideally it would be good to be able to take into account. So statistical models can do that. The question might not be simply, do the groups differ statistically? You might want to sort of ask something a bit more elaborate than that. So other potential things you might ask is, do um, these groups differ statistically after allowing for some potentially confounding factors? Does the difference vary significantly in different areas, different experiments um, over time? Another thing you can do with a st statistical model is form a prediction. If you've got a set of measurements, you can try and predict something from them. So I'll start off in this first bit by looking at a brief recap on analysis of variance and regression, which we looked at last time, and uh, spend most of the time thinking about a class of models known as general linear models, which are suitable for normal data. They actually encompass ANOVA and regression, are quite a flexible class of models. And then after the break, I'll give a very brief introduction to some models that are suitable for data that have different types of distributions but in some ways kind of work in a similar way to mix to general linear models. Briefly discuss repeated measures data, which needs special consideration, and very briefly introduce something known as mixed or multi-level models, which I'll be doing a sort of individual sessions on next year. So just thinking about these general linear models that I said we'd concentrate on, basically they encompass different types of the models we've seen already. We've looked at regression and multi multiple regression models. And we looked at simple ANOVA. We can in fact have ANOVA with more factors if we want to. We can actually combine the effects of ANOVA and regression. And all of these would form a type of um, general linear model. So they're a flexible class of models. So before looking at some, what I'll do is just recap on what ANOVA was about and what regression was about. 